and he studies uh, mathematical and theoretical physics mm -hmm. at Christchurch College. So if you see lots of tourists around, expect that because many tourists come to Christchurch because it's like Harry Potter College. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this is so many tourists, it's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, I'm a fourth year um, on the mathematical and theoretical physics. So I used to be on the physics course and now I'm on the, the maths and theory course because you can swap in your fourth year. Mm -hmm. And you're telling me your plans for next year are quite exciting as well. <laughs> yep, so I've got, I've got a cheeky little PhD Ooh. lined up for next year, so that should be great. really fun. <laughs> but I admire Thank you. it. Thank you. <laughs> I'm um, glad someone does. <laughs> yeah. um, so today, he's going to be asking, answering some of your questions and talking about his course, and hopefully that's helpful to you. I'm going to run to that side now cool. and give you the spotlight. <laughs> so um, how many people were in your year group, if you could roughly estimate? Yeah, so um, during my undergrad, well, like during the first three years, there was about 150, 180 people mm -hmm. uh, who did physics. Um, and now that I've switched uh, master's courses, I am, uh, there's about 40 of us, I think. Is that in the whole In the uni? whole year. Okay, okay, yeah. cool. Wow. So could you give us a brief outline of your first course, and then you can move to the second one? Sure. Um, so, I was originally on the, the Integrated Masters of Physics, um, which is a four-year course. In the first three years, like, you have to do every single module um, if you're doing the, the full four-year courses, and you get one choice uh, of, for a short option. So it could be, um, it's normally like worth half a paper, um, but so throughout the years you get, um, you do courses on maths, um, so electromagnetism, special relativity, like, you know, all sorts. Um, and then in your fourth year, you can, if you want to, switch to the other masters, which is what I'm doing, which is a maths and theoretical physics course. Um, and that course, you can choose 10 units, completely free, it's completely up to you what you want to do. Um, whereas if you stuck on the MPhys, the Master of Physics, um, you have to do a project and you have to do two choices. Um, so one is much more like experimental and like you actually do a project and the other one is still very taught but uh -huh. completely like optional. Mm -hmm. um, this is super foreign to me especially because I'm terrible with numbers. <laughs> <laughs> but like what was your favourite module to take or the favourite part of your course? Uh, of what year? Any year. Any year. Any year. So this year I've done a course in networks which mm -hmm. basically is applying maths to networks of, say, like social networks, so like Facebook data, oh. or it could even be political networks. So I, I like looked at, for example, the, a network of like political books. Like you can mathematically group them into like separate groups and you find that it does split them into like left wing and right wing and center wing even. Um, oh. Or you can do it on uh, like epidemiology, so like how diseases spread as well. Um, so it's a very, very cool course. And I never I, I expected like that. That's so cool. Yeah. So that's basically what I'm going to do my PhD on next year. Oh, wow. Okay. Spoilers. <laughs> Spoilers. <laughs> you yeah. heard it here first. <laughs> um, so actually, moving on from that, is there anything that people did not expect about your course that you hear a lot? But um, yeah, any myths you could dispel, basically? Yeah. So I would say that I think every, pretty much everyone agrees that first year is very, very boring because it mm -hmm. is lots of like introduction courses, sort of getting people up to speed on their maths because some people haven't done further maths, some people have, yeah. which is completely fine, you know, um, and it is really useful. But it is hard to see like where, why it's going to be useful until you then do on, move on to the second year and third year. Um, so it definitely gets much, much easier, mm -hmm. uh, sorry, much, and much more uh, what's it, interesting as you move on through the years. And also in terms of um, how you approach like, tutorials, mm -hmm. um, I think lots of people, when they first come into Oxford, they, especially for like mathematical subjects like physics, they want to do every single question perfectly right and get all of the algebra perfectly right, but that's just not very sustainable. Mm -hmm. If you're stubborn like me, which I was, um, you know, you're just going to like hammer out 10, 20 hours on this one problem set, but that's not really worth it because yeah. at the end of the day, your teacher is there to help you. So if you have any questions, like do, don't be afraid to ask, you know, that, that's their job. Mm -hmm. So if, if you're stuck on one bit, obviously try your hardest, but don't think that you can't just ask your teachers, even if they look intimidating. Yeah, yeah. So. I think that applies to all subjects, to be honest. Like yeah. your tutors are there to help you. Magic voice behind the camera telling you that. Um, <laughs> Um, the other thing I was going to quickly ask you is, if you haven't done further maths, do you mm -hmm. think that's a hindrance or do you think you can catch up to everybody who has? I think 
it's obviously very useful if you have, but if not, it's fine because you will like you will learn all of the basic maths that you will need um, okay. in your first year. So you will do um, how to solve like differential equations, how to do basic calculus, mm -hmm. um, vector calculus, and some, like vectors and matrices stuff. So. Can I just say, this is all the stuff I've heard in American films? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. oh, wow. So if any of those things don't like, make any sense, don't, it's fine, because you'll learn about it. Yeah, you'll, you'll get this. So also with the tute sheets and stuff like that, mm -hmm. um, what have you found most helpful for completing them? Because I have friends who do similar courses to you, and sometimes they're just miserable because it's so difficult and it takes them so long. But what have you found really useful to help you just get through it? So definitely for the first couple of years, like honestly, Google, <laughs> um, okay. and especially um, what's it called, a Stack Exchange, because like mm -hmm. you get Physics Stack Exchange, where lots and lots of both answers and like methods are like explained, because people mm -hmm. do ask those kind of questions, but also textbooks. Like um, I didn't really use any textbooks until second year, and I wish I had used some. They are really, really useful. Sometimes either, you know, they're much better at explaining a certain aspect of the course or they'll actually like walk you through a, like a similar kind of question. Um, okay. So definitely textbooks are like really good um, resources um, and you should be able to get them for free from the all of the libraries available. So. Oh, amazing. Cool. Yeah. And do your tutors like recommend which ones are best to use? Yeah, so tutors often will have their own sort of favourites, but also the, the lecturers themselves will say like, here's a, here's a reading list. Mm -hmm. It's not really a reading list where you have to like read everything, but like here's a list of books which are useful. Mm -hmm. um, and so like pick one or two and you know, you might find you prefer one over the other or whatever, uh, which is completely fine. So. Mm -hmm. So I was going to ask you to share some kind advice for the people watching this video, but we'll do it in two parts. So the first one would be maybe um, if you're applying to the course, mm -hmm. any tips, words of wisdom, and then the second one would be like coping and surviving whilst you're on the course. <laughs> but we'll go with the first one first. Okay. If you're applying, I would definitely say when you're writing your personal statement, and this comes not just from me, but also from my tutor. I know lots of people, and I've done the same as well, lots of people will want to write like, oh, I've read this amazing book on quantum electrodynamics, or I've read this book on general relativity, like, you know, these are things that you're not, like, no one expects you to know these things until, like, fourth year and onwards, so, like, if you're going to talk about, like, science that you've read and stuff, make sure that it's something that you, A, um, like, just enjoy, even if it's something as basic as, like, how does a rainbow form, if you can get that down and just show that you're enthusiastic and actually care about the subject, then that's much more uh, conducive to like a better interview as well. And like the tutors themselves, right, whenever they read, oh, I've read general relativity, like they're like, well, you probably haven't, but that's, you know, so they just want you, to, they want you to be honest and like to show your passion. For the current students, I guess like do your best, but don't let that, as I said earlier, like if you're stubborn, you don't have to spend a billion hours on a problem set. You know, make sure you do like some, take some time off, enjoy other things. I find enjoying like other things aside from the course itself is also really fun. Like, cause then you go away from it and you don't have to like think about it for a bit. So do other activities and stuff. What kind of things are you involved in? So I do, currently I do lots of like activisty stuff. So mm -hmm. I do um, Common Ground, which is like the colonial work. Yep, yep. Um, and a bit on um, with Extinction Rebellion. We do like climate work as well. So yeah, you can get involved with all, a lot of different things. You know, it, it doesn't have to be activist. It can be like film or sports as well. Is there something that you wish you knew before coming onto this course, especially like doing it at Oxford? Because I know it's different at other unis, and we're not going to mention those places because you're here for Oxford now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But yeah, anything you wish that you knew? I knew obviously coming into Oxford that it is quite a posh and quite a white space. Mm -hmm. um, but I ne it never really clicked until I got here like how I fit into that equation. So I kind of wish I had a bit more of a primer into like how I would be within the community. Obviously there's still like lots and lots of like great people and like great communities and stuff, but um, definitely how to cope with the lack of diversity sometimes. I mean, and sometimes it's completely fine, but you know. Um, I guess, um, does that lack of diversity per se reflect in your course? Um, so the course itself, I would say, is fairly racially diverse, but then we have a ton of international students. Within the domestic sphere, I don't think there's many, there's that many people of colour. 
for example. There's not even that many people like from lower economic backgrounds, you know, like from the north. Like, so I'm from the northwest, and there's maybe like five of us, I think. Um, I my, one of my really good friends is from Northern Ireland, and she's the only one for several several years. So you know, and so there's there's a lack of diversity in that front as well, and also. Like, during the undergraduate, in terms of, like, gender split, it's fairly okay-ish, but then in my course now, the mathematical and theoretical physics, there's something like six, no, there's something like three or four girls out of 40. Wow. <laughs> which is obviously, like, ridiculous. Um, so that's also something to be aware of, but, you know, if you're applying, you don't need to worry about that until... Yeah. I would also add, and maybe you can confirm or deny this, but I feel like Oxford is maybe improving in terms of the diversity thing. Slowly, but surely. Yeah, I think, I think definitely. Well, we're seeing, especially with the, like the foundation year that's happening, I, mm -hmm. think, um, I think we are definitely seeing a much more diverse population. I think individual colleges do a lot to try and like, increase access, which is really nice. Uh, and we also have a really good, on the physics course, at least, we have a really good equality and diversity people who like really care about this kind of stuff, so at least on that their part, they're doing really well, so... Mm -hmm. yeah. oh. So I guess if there's anything else that you want to tell people about your course or Oxford in general, you could do that. <laughs> sure. Um, yeah, I think when you come to Oxford, you do realise just how crazy of a place it is, especially if you have like other friends at other unis. One night you might be going to a very like fancy formal, and the next night you might just be boogieing down at the ISIS farmhouse or whatever. It's an intense life, but I think um, it's really, really fun. Like, there's so, so many things to do and everything's so close. So yeah, um, I think just when you're out to do like, it's a bit of a cliche, but just do try everything. Um, you will probably find something that you enjoy. And there's like so much out there, even in the city itself. So. Yeah, can confirm. <laughs> um, thank you so much for joining us. Good luck with the PhD and, you. you know, the studies you're doing right now. And see you all next time for another video very similar to this. Bye. <laughs> There's many tourists at Christchurch. Yep. And this is the life. <laughs> tourists <is> are <laughs> never ending. Can you take pictures of them? No. They were asking me to take pictures of them, but okay. I'm just like, no. Of them, that's, that's less weird. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this, uh, uh, maybe... That's pretty cute. <laughs> <laughs> Do it again. <laughs>